The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. 24th Rose, Means of Perfection. Thank you to those that have subscribed and are sharing. The saints always made our, our Lord's life the principal object of their study. They meditated on his virtues and sufferings, and in this way they arrived at Christian perfection. Once St. Bernard began this meditation, he always continued it. At the very beginning of my conversation, he said, I made a bouquet of myrrh made up of the sorrows of my Savior. I placed this bouquet upon my heart, thinking of the stripes, the thorns, and the nails of his passion. I used all my mental strength to meditate on these mysteries every day. This was a practice of, holy, of the holy martyrs too. We know how admirably they triumph over the most cruel sufferings. St. Bernard says that the martyrs' wonderfully, wonderful constancy could have only sprung from the source, their constant meditation on the wounds of Jesus Christ. The martyrs were Christ's athletes, his champions, while their blood gushed forth and their bodies were wrecked with cruel torments. Their generous souls were hidden in the wounds of our Lord. These wounds made them invincible. During her whole life, the Blessed Mother, her chief concern was meditation on the bridges and sufferings of her son. When she heard the angels sing their hymns of joy at his birth, and when she saw the shepherds adore him in the stable, her heart and mind were filled with wonder, and she meditated upon all these marvels. She compared the greatness of the Word incarnate to his deep humility and the way he lowered himself. She thought of him in his manger, filled with straw, and then... and then on his throne in heaven and in the bosom of his eternal father. She compared the might of God to the weakness of a baby and his wisdom to his simplicity. One day, Our Lady said to St. Saint Bridget, whenever I meditated on the beauty, modesty, and wisdom of my son, my heart was filled with joy, and whenever I thought of his hands and feet, which would be pierced with cruel nails, I wept bitterly, and my heart was rent with sorrow and pain. After our Lord's ascension, our Blessed Lady spent the rest of her life in visiting the places that had been ha hallowed by his presence and sufferings. When she was in those places, she used to meditate upon his boundless love and upon his terrible passion. St. Mary Magdalene did nothing other than religious exercises of this kind, this kind during the last 30 years of her life, when she lived in the prayerful seclusion of St. Baum. St. Jeremy says that the devotions to the holy places was widespread among the faithful in the early centuries of the church. They came to the Holy Land from all corners of Christendom. As so, to impress a great love and remembrance of their Savior more deeply upon their hearts by seeing the places and things he had made holy by his birth, by his work, and by his sufferings, and by his death. All Christians have but one faith and adore one and the same God, all hoping for the same happiness in heaven. They have one mediator who is Jesus Christ. 
and therefore they must all imitate their divine model and in order to do this they must meditate on the mysteries of his life his virtues and of his glory it is a great mistake to think that only priests and religious and those who have withdrawn from the turmoil of the world are supposed to meditate upon the truths of our faith and the mysteries of of the life of jesus christ if priests and religious have an obligation to meditate on the great truths of our holy religion in order to live up to their vocation worthily the same obligation then is just as much incumbent upon the laity because of the fact that every day they meet with the spiritual dangers which might make them lose their souls. Therefore, they should arm themselves with the frequent meditation of the life and virtues and sufferings of our blessed Lord, which are so beautifully contained in the 15 mysteries of the Holy Rosary. St. Mary Magdalene, according to a tradition, has spent the last 30 years of her life in Provence at a place subsequently called Saint Baum the Holy Ointment. Pilgrims go to the Dominican Church of Saint Baum to venerate the relic of her head which is preserved there. And this was a quote from the Catholic Encyc Encyclopedia. Also note that the author means Catholics at the same time he wrote this work the 17th century, Protestantism had erupted. Ballon had been the habit of referring to Christians, meaning Catholics, since until the revolt of only people calling themselves Christians were Catholics. He most certainly did not mean to imply that Protestants have exactly the same faith as Catholics. And that is so true. And in addition, don't forget that there is the additional by mysteries of the rosary added by um, by the Pope um, John Paul II. And remember that his mission was to remind us of God's merciful love. And in the luminous mysteries, we can see God's merciful love there. Um, this book, as we know, was, was written prior to having uh, Pope St. John, uh, Pope um, St. John Paul II. So remember to pray, pray every day, pray without ceasing. If you can do all four rosaries, it would be wonderful meditate the 20 mysteries and let me tell you the rosary is the key to go to heaven and is the key to acquire the perfection that we need remember nothing impure can enter the kingdom of God and, but we must also remember that God is merciful and he loves us deeply. And his love is so beautiful like this rose. But remember, the beauty of, of the rose also have, have thorns. And life is like the rosary. At times we have glorious days luminous days joyful days but we also have the thorns in our life which are the painful painful days but we're not alone god is with us and mama mary is with us as well may the lord bless you and those who you love and once again, pray for me and my family as I continue to pray for you and your families daily. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.